and people they, they hear this like yeah but sure but how about a big in a big city but you're looking at this for example have done projects uh, or feasibility studies in Helsinki uh, and you can uh, please explain I mean we're not talking about uh, I mean if you for seasonal uh, storage the the space required is, is not that big uh, that people might think no that is true uh, the city of Helsinki they have a district heating network serving the approximately 1 million inhabitants of, of Helsinki. And to get the heat for this district heating, they burn 500,000 tons of coal every year. And they have committed to have zero CO2 by 2030. So they made a competition to ask people, how can we replace those 500,000 tons of coal? And our proposal was to build 20 million square meters of solar thermal systems combined with those large seasonal storages. And we could actually show that this the city system would be cheaper than to continue to burn coal for the city. And what we found that was very interesting also that this large area of solar collectors around Helsinki, it was identical to the area of golf courses that existed around Helsinki. And of course, we don't want to build on the golf courses, but if it was possible to find areas for the golf courses, it should also be possible to find area for the system that can replace the fossil fuel for Helsinki. So even, even if there are some areas needed, it's no problem fitting it into the existing environment. Yeah, and in this particular project, you were looking at replacing about 50% of the overall uh, heat use, right? Um, in the city uh, of Helsinki. In Helsinki, we aimed at 100%. 100%, wow. Okay, because that's that good. Was, hmm? Then in combination with some heat pumps and some electric boilers and some other systems. So the whole system was 100%. Yeah, and my point is that mentioning this project is very interesting. Helsinki, obviously, it's in a climate like in Sweden. It's, they have a lot long winters. So if it could be apl applicable to this uh, environment, it should be applicable to many, many, many cities like in the central U U.S., in northern, I mean, in, in Canada, Definitely. and, you know, you name it. Definitely. And you, you can see on the background picture, background here I have, this is an installation in Sweden where we produce 110 degree hot water for the local district heating network. So it's no problem making high temperatures even in cold climates. Yeah. And then, then people may wonder, oh, they, this sounds fantastic, but why it's not? Why, why don't we see this now? Why, why is it only happening at a large scale in Denmark, for example? And you have a project going on in different parts of the world, but uh, why are nothing, nothing happening? Can you say something about that? Well, I, I think that we are seeing this. We just need to look at the right places. And I think it's quite incredible that in Denmark, 126 cities build solar thermal systems without anyone noticing. And I think it's the same with the solar thermal systems that we have built now with Carlsberg and Peroni and Colgate, that they are out there. You can look at them, you can visit them. But the knowledge about that it's possible to run your city or your industry on solar thermal, it's still very low. And people are, are mixing up uh, solar thermal collectors that makes heat with PV panels that makes electricity. So we have a long way to go before people actually understand the enormous potential of harvesting the sunlight immediately and making heat with 70 plus percent efficiency. This is something that people don't think about. No, 